Hey, this is Jeff, and with this video I've achieved my New Year's resolution to make more videos for Belthin's channel in 2019 than I did in 2018, which was two. That doesn't mean I'll be packing it in for the rest of the year. In fact, I have a few new things in the works already, and I'm now an admin so I can upload videos as soon as they're done. Today I'm back on the Xbox 360 playing more Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition. A while back, I did a video that showed you how to escape the world map, which I did on the Xbox, so you'd know I'm not using mods or console commands. A few weeks ago, I continued from that original save game and made my way to the Legates Camp and Kaisar's Fort, but I couldn't get into either one because of invisible walls. Well, that's interesting. I didn't notice last time, but some of the water texture is missing. You can see right to the bottom. Uh, anyway, I eventually got here to the shore of Lake Mead, outside the net that keeps you from swimming east past Guardian Peak, and I want to see if I can find the northern end of the lake, like I found the end of the river south of Cottonwood Cove. If I can find a place to climb out, maybe we can skirt around the northern edge of the map and get into Nellis Air Force Base. The western shore of the lake is definitely climbable, at least where I got out at the end of the last episode, but the eastern shore looks less and less promising the closer I get to it. The good news is, at least I probably don't have to worry about invisible walls out here. I know I rant about this a lot, but they basically fall into two categories. Some of them are intended to keep you out of holes that your only way out would be to fast travel or to prevent you from escaping the world map and doing exactly what I'm doing right now, which they clearly failed on that point. But that's all fine. But sometimes they're put there just to limit your options and try to force you into a linear story progression, and I find that unnecessary and annoying in an open-world RPG. Yeah, I'm not climbing that. Well, we'll see how it looks farther north. Um, I'm taking a lot of rads, but I'm not going to bother with rad away until I get out, <laughs> assuming this character has any rad away. I think it's interesting that this part of Lake Mead is just as irradiated as the Potomac River in Fallout 3. Lore-wise, Vegas wasn't hit hard by nukes because of Mr. House's interceptor missiles. And the normally playable part of Lake Mead and the Colorado River aren't irradiated. I guess it might imply that the water upstream is contaminated, like from the ruins of Denver or something. A dog town in game lore, I guess. But that's a long way away. And if the radiation made it this far, it seems like it would accumulate closer to the dam. Plus, other tributaries like the Virgin River and the Honest Hearts DLC are clean. More likely, it's just because the game inherited a lot of resources from Fallout 3 and all the water in that game is irradiated. So they probably only removed the radioactivity effect from the water as far out as the player's supposed to be able to go. And everything outside that area is still just radioactive by default. You know, actually, if this is all based on real geography, and granted, you have to take the geography in Fallout games with a grain of salt, but things broadly tend to be in the right place, the Colorado River would continue east from the part of the lake around the fort, and the Virgin River would empty into it up north here, so there really wouldn't be any lore-related reason for this part of the lake to be contaminated. Yeah, there's still a lot of lake left, might as well go all the way. If you follow the river as far south as it goes, it just comes to a dead end, and it's in a deep canyon the whole way, so there's definitely no way out of it. But this isn't nearly as vertical as... <laughs> We're around the back of some cliffs that you can presumably see the front of from the playable area of the map. A lot of the objects that line the borders of the game world are like that. They're hollow because you're only supposed to see them from the front, so when you see them from the back like that, it's like taking the camera behind the fake storefronts of an old movie set. Except you can get stuck inside them if you're not careful, which isn't a problem, but whoa! Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Apparently I'm still in water, but the game just isn't drawing it. <laughs> dive! Dive! I don't think this character has a rebreather, but my oxygen isn't running out. It's like the game can't decide if I'm in water or not. Let's swim pretty close to the bottom just in case it suddenly decides I'm over land. <laughs> don't want to plummet to my death. Ooh, just in the nick of time. Just went from swimming noises to footsteps when I move. No, not wait. Um, what button's the third-person camera on a controller? That's crouch. That's still crouch. 
There we go. Yeah, I'm definitely running and not swimming now. And that still looks too steep to climb. Up where the surface of the water would be if I was still in water, the ground might be climbable, but it doesn't do me any good from down here. Well, I'm not taking any more rads, so let's pop some rad away before I forget. Good, I do have plenty. Anyway, what I was saying when I got distracted by those hollow cliffs and <laughs> invisible water, the uh, edges of the canyon along the river south of Cottonwood Cove are almost vertical, but the walls of this riverbed, whatever, they aren't nearly as steep, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we might still find a place to climb out. Uh, maybe right here. There is a technique to climbing steep hills in Bethesda games, at least the Fallout games and Elder Scrolls games. Well, Oblivion and Skyrim, anyway. Morrowind is different. And I know New Vegas is technically Obsidian, not Bethesda, but it's the same physics engine. It's not a terribly sophisticated technique, but sometimes it takes a little more skill than just mashing the jump button. The game generally doesn't let you move forward or jump if the incline of what you're standing on is above a certain slope threshold, but it's pretty generous about letting you move side to side along that slope. And if you can find a spot where the slope is changing, especially around surfaces that are more convex than the rest of the landscape around it, like at the end of a hill, sometimes it'll let you get away with it if your timing with the jump button is just right. Yeah, like that. Ah. Uh -huh. So close, and yet so far. Okay, well, even if I can't get out, I have a plan B. In the first episode, after I got out of the world map, I had to go way to the southeast to get around the end of the river. I was so far outside the playable area that the Pip-Boy map wouldn't even scroll to where I was. After I got around the river, I cut northwest again to get back on the world map and see the Deathclaw Promontory from above. And then last episode, I found the Leggett's Camp and the Fort, but we know the lake is shaped kind of like an inverted Y. We're in the north part, the west part goes south to the dam, and the fort is on kind of a peninsula surrounded on three sides by water. I don't know exactly what the shape of the lake is like east of the fort, but if we go south from there, we should eventually be able to turn east and go all the way around the outside of the lake above its eastern shore, just like we did with the river south of Cottonwood Cove. And hope springs eternal, but I'm just going to keep heading north and see if we can find a more promising spot up there. I'm wondering if the invisible water was like the texture glitching in episode one, I think I talked about it then, but everything big in the game that you can see from a distance has two sets of textures. One low res that you see when you're far away, and a higher resolution version that you see close up. I'm not talking about the pop-in you see with small things like items and characters, but like when you see a building in the distance that starts looking blurry as you approach it and then suddenly it gets clearer, that's when the game switches to the higher resolution textures. And that's not only true for large objects like buildings and cliffs, but also the raw landscape, the floor of the game world that we're walking on right now, and also makes up the hills and the mountains on the horizon. But when you get so far out that you're beyond that horizon, and there's no way you could ever see the landscape from the playable area, it starts flickering and changing colors. Yeah, <laughs> just like that. I guess because you should never see it, they didn't bother giving it a specific texture, and the game gets confused when you do see it and doesn't really know how to draw it. And I'm guessing something like that is what was going on with the invisible water. But I think we've reached the end, and it doesn't look like there's any way out. Um, gonna have to start over from my save all the way back at the dam, so... I'm going to call it a day, and we'll try Plan B some other time. See you soon.